I'm going to find proof of God on YouTube by switching through different channels. I'm going to do it this time for sure. I'm going to find God. Number one, the universe must have a cause. You started when you were young telling lies. Have you ever stolen something, even if it's small, in your whole life? Have you ever used God's name in vain? Have you ever looked with lust? I think that there are some people out there who genuinely don't believe God exists because they've suppressed the truth so long that God has given up to their own desires. And As I look back at the evils of atheist regimes of the 20th century, continuum, all of them have to come into existence at the same instant. Because if there were matter but no space, where would blah, you put it? Blah, 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 space, blah. No time, Wait, what was that thing before? Wait, you go back to that other thing. Hold on. Magic. In order to extract the argument from God, we have to take a look at this song and convert it into a syllogism. As you can see, premise one is fighting evil by moonlight, premise two is winning love by daylight, and so on and so forth. I'm not going to read out the entire song to you because you can read and you can follow along. Instead, I'm going to explain each premise because that will be how you understand this is a proof of God. All right, so premise one, in order for there to be evil, there has to be good. Therefore, she must be all good, omnibenevolent. And of course, two, love can only be one if it's real. And if it's real, it can only exist if it's transcendent. And if it's transcendent, then she also must be transcendent in order to win love since it's transcendent. Number three, she doesn't run from fights implies she can always win. So she's omnipotent. And of course, number four shows that she has a unique name of the one. Now, of course, number five, she has to be omnipresent in order to never turn her back on a friend. If she's everywhere, then she can never turn her back towards a friend. Her front is omnipresent. And number six, she must be just in order to defend. She has to be always around as well. Of course, that reinforces the first premise. But in order to be just, she must know what things are right or wrong. Therefore, she's omniscient. Now, of course, number seven can only be depended on if she loves everyone, so she must be all loving, so she must have agape love. And number eight, there's only one of her. She's unique, but there's four names of her. They, these must be different aspects of the same Sailor Moon. And then number nine, the power is a secret, so it has to be hidden. You can't see it, see? And that means she must have a time that is unlike her own, so she has to be atemporal. And number 10 is just the same as number 4. 11, 12 are the same as 1 and 2. And 13 is where it gets interesting. These Sailor Scouts, they, they have to refer to beings that she leads. So if she's a leader, she has to be the one leader. She's the most powerful being. Number 14 is the same as 4. Number 15, same as 4. Number 16, okay, we get it already. Ah, okay. But. So, what is Sailor Moon? She is omnipresent, omnibolivident, omnipotent, omniscient, transcendent, has agape, she's all loving, has different aspects, she's atemporal, she's unique, she's powerful. Yep, that's God. Sailor Moon is God. QED.